Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into our Marvel and DC fan fiction universe, and we're carrying on with our putty invasion. I've crossed over all five current storylines on this channel into one big crossover and introduced Mark the Red Cornish Ranger, created and voiced by, well, Mark the Red Cornish Ranger. Parties are invading from another universe, and all of our characters have met, uh, teamed up together to fight back. This is part three of the invasion, but I've separated it into different acts, just so it's easier for you guys to digest, as this is the counter part of the story. There's action and there's drama, but there isn't a lot of story progression with the invasion. Not so much, anyway. So, make sure you keep up with all the acts, and part 4 will just be all one continuous part, like the previous two. So that being said, let's dive in with the invasion of the putties. Part 3, preparing the counter-invasion. Act 2, everyone climbed out of the jets and swarmed into the massive warehouse. Mr. Pocket pulled Thunderstruck to one side. <clears throat> What's up, boss? He asked. Son, there is a problem with one of the worldwide civilian helicarriers. It seems like some putties have found their way onto one of them. HC-13R, Mr. Pocket told him. Thunderstruck looked at Mr. Pocket with an evil glare. Your son is on that one, isn't he? Mr. Pocket asked. Yes, he is, Thunderstruck muttered. Well, there is only one thing you can do, Mr. Pocket suggested. Hmm. What you thinking, boss? Thunderstruck asked. Well, I cannot release our heroes and villains. You don't want anyone knowing of your offspring's existence, so I would be willing for you to be excused so you can deal with the matter. There is also more lives at stake, obviously. Mr. Pocket told him. <sighs> I've got it covered, boss. I'll handle it. Thunderstruck replied with a nod. Then Thunderstruck walked off when suddenly Jordan, the Red Lantern, stood in the way of him. Where do you think you're going? Jordan hissed. Nowhere. Move out of my way. Thunderstruck barked. It's Grayson, isn't it? Our son's in trouble? Jordan snapped. Yes, his helicarrier is under attack, and they're struggling to fend him off. Thunderstruck explained. I'm coming with you, and I'm not taking no for an answer. Jordan barked at him. Thunderstruck rolled his eyes, then he walked past Jordan and headed out of the warehouse. Jordan followed him, then they walked past the building. If you're coming with, then can you fly us there? Thunderstruck grinned with a cocky attitude. Jordan looked at Thunderstruck with a venomous glare. You got a better idea? Thunderstruck snapped. Fine, stand back. Jordan muttered. Thunderstruck took a step back as Jordan held out her ring, then her Red Lantern suit shimmered over her. Her mask appeared on her face and her hair was placed in a ponytail. The Red Lantern aimed her ring and the red light emanated from its encasing energy and encased Thunderstruck. Then the Red Lantern took flight and Thunderstruck started floating off as well. They both flew off into the sky and bolted at high speeds. They finally found the helicarrier that was under attack. They had... Putty swarming the runway and the main hangar had been smashed in and the windows all broken. I'll get you in. Activate the emergency shields. Jordan ordered. She flung the mutant at the window. Thunstruck entered the hangar and crashed on the floor, his body absorbing the impact, and converted it into kinetic energy. He stood and found three soldiers trying to fend off some putties. Thunderstruck ran up to the first party and slammed his fist into it. His fist struck it in the stomach. Then, with his other hand, he punched it in the head. The other party started punching Thunderstruck in the torso, but his body absorbed the attacks. Thunderstruck pulled his hand free, then smacked the putty in the head, which made it go flying back. Then he turned to the other two. He grabbed an incoming fist and crushed it in his hand. He then booted the putty across the room and it slammed into the wall. The last putty jumped on Thunderstruck's back, wrapped his arms around his neck, trying to strangle him. Thunderstruck just released the kinetic energy that he had stored up, pushing the putty off of him, and the putty exploded into lumps of clay. He then walked over to the console, he pressed some buttons, and the emergency metal barrier doors closed over where the window should be. Hey listeners, I'm glad you're enjoying what you're listening. I'm Billy, and I'm joined with Jim, the host of Zero to Hero podcast. 
the one safe space for all the nerddom. We talk about anything that ranges from the Power Rangers to maybe a man on the moon. Come check us out and see what kind of rabbit holes we could dive into with our weekly guest. Or, if you're lucky, just an episode of me and Jim squabbling together. On the runway of the Hadikari, a party swarmed the surface, climbing all over the parked jets and tried to get into the propellers trying to bring down the Hadikari. Jordan aimed her ring and created several spear constructs. They all floated around her. She grabbed one and threw it, and it struck one of the putties that had tried climbing to the one of the propellers. Then she grabbed the second one and threw it at a putty that had bested a soldier in combat. She grabbed the third spear and threw it, and it struck a putty and penetrated the wall, making the putty hang there helpless. She landed on the ground, grabbed the last spear, and saw one of the putties running at her. She swung the spear and smacked the putty as hard as she could, Swinging it, cutting the head off. Then she rammed the spear into the chest of another putty. Then she slammed the spear on the ground and sent out a shockwave which knocked over the putties off their feet. Jordan then aimed her ring and several tentacles constructs which grabbed the putties and then flung them off the helicarrier. She then flew up into the air once more and flew out the door and the soldiers opened it as she flew in. She entered the helicarrier and entered a corridor, which had several putties trying to break down. Jordan made a massive wrecking ball construct, which swung across the corridor and smashed into the putties, destroying them in one big swoop. The door opened, and Thunderstruck stood there, not impressed. <laughs> well done, Thunderstruck muttered. Thanks, Jordan replied. Then Thunderstruck gestured for Jordan to follow him. They ran down the corridor and turned left, hearing a lot of screaming coming from one of the rooms. Jordan made a big fist construct which sat around her actual fist. She punched the door and it flew off its hinges. Both of them dived in to find a massive group of people being terrorised by the putties, not a soldier in sight. Thunderstruck dived in and started smacking one of the putties across the room. Jordan made several shuriken constructs and threw them at the putties. Thunderstruck grabbed one of the putties and slammed his fist into its head several times, then lifted it into the air, and Jordan jumped up and vomited blood plasma on its head, melting it away. Thunderstruck then swung the lifeless corpse around, using it to batter the, the leftover putties. Thunderstruck and Jordan stood there with a heavy breath. Then suddenly, a little boy ran over to Thunderstruck and dived into his arms. Thunderstruck picked him up and scooped him and cuddled him tight. Jordan stood there in awe. Her red lantern suit shivered away off of her body and her mask disappeared. For the first time, she had met her son. Hey bud, don't worry, it's okay. I've got you. Thunderstruck muttered to the boy. Jordan stood there with tears filling her eyes. So, this is him? Jordan asked, Thunderstruck nodded. Then he put his son on the ground. Hey, little man. This is Jordan. She's a friend of mine. Thunderstruck told Grayson. Grayson did not say anything to her, but he let out a small wave. Jordan let out a small chuckle and wiped her cheek as a tear strolled down it. Hey there, Grayson. Nice to meet you. I must say you look like your father. Jordan said to the boy with a weak smile. Then some of the soldiers ran into the room and walked up to Thunderstruck. Please make sure Grayson finds his grandmother, because if he doesn't, I'm going to shove my fist right down your throat. Thunderstruck snapped. Yes, sir, we have completely secured the helicarrier. Thank you, the soldier said to him with a small salute. Then, after Thunderstruck said his goodbye to Grayson, the soldier escorted Grayson away. Thunderstruck then turned to a rather sad and emotional Jordan. You left him, remember? Thunderstruck barked. I know, I'm sorry, Jordan said sadly. After this whole world-ending shit is done with, I will try my best to get Grayson into my custody. And if that goes well, then I will think about you seeing him. Thunderstruck explained. Are, are you sure that's wise? I'm not exactly the mother of the year, Jordan replied. She suddenly had a lump in her throat. Like I said, it's a big maybe, and that's if, and only if, we save the world first. Thunderstruck sighed, then Thunderstruck walked off. 
Jordan took a deep breath, nodded to herself, and then she ran off and caught up with Thunderstruck. They stepped outside and onto one of the landing pads. Hey, boss. Helicarrier is safe. <sighs> Thunderstruck said in his communicator, Good job. Mr. Pocket replied, then Jordan's communicator beeped and she answered it, and then Mr. Pocket's voice came out of everyone's communicators. Everyone is required to return back to the warehouse, Mr. Pocket said. Both of them nodded to each other, Jordan's suit shimmered over her once more, and once again she carried Thunderstruck in a ball construct, and both of them flew off and headed back to the warehouse, and mentally prepared for the counter-invasion. Thunderstruck was played by Austin. Jordan, the Red Lantern, was voiced by Jordan. This podcast is a production of the Three Ranger Bros Studios, in association with CO to Hero, the podcast. And there we have it, guys. Thank you very much for listening to this story. If you've enjoyed this story, then you might want to check out all of my Tiger Tales channels. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. There's Tiger Tales, the first and the original. This is a place where you'll find stories on fan fictions, diving into all sorts of fandoms, including Power Rangers, Pokemon, The Walking Dead, Marvel, DC, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and so, so much more. Tiger Tales The Lost Stories follows the same suit, but all the stories on that channel are in the first person perspective. Then there's Tiger Tales Game Over, a channel where all of the storylines are related to video games in some way or another. Then we have Tiger Tales X, where I write official crossovers. Crossovers that aren't needed, but are very wanted, and t crossovers I thought might work. Then, of course, we have Tiger Tales Mysterious Origins. This is the YouTube channel dedicated to my own original stories. All the stories on this channel are original and my own, and it also answers questions on certain characters throughout my stories, like William Cranston, Mr. Pocket, and Ace from The Color Matrix. If you've enjoyed these storylines, then please make sure you check out the following podcasts. Storytime with Cosplay Dude 637. Power Rangers Universe 19. Sailor Moon E. And The Order. And make sure you check out two YouTube channels, Nostalgia Time and the One Piece Audio Drama. They are all written and read to you and edited by Cosmic Dude 637 my paramatai and best friend. Then, make sure you check out the podcast Nerds Through Comics, which is directed by Mark, the Red Cornish Ranger. This is where he adapts comic books into audio dramas and also uploads his own original Power Ranger storylines. We are the Three Ranger Bros Studios, a collaborative project, and we are all voice actors and helpers of each other's stuff, so make sure you go check us out. We're in association with the Zeo to Hero podcast, so a huge shout out to Billy and Jim, the co-hosts, and of course the podcast and the community that they lead. If we're shouting out podcasts, I have to shout out Jared, the host of If You Give It Down a Podcast. Make sure you check it out because he interviews some fantastic guests, from wrestlers to voice actors and the such. And of course, if we're talking podcasts, I have to mention my own, the Tiger Nexus podcast, where I interview content creators and geeks alike. A huge shout out to all my supporters and followers, my voice actors, the people who co-write my chapters, and the sorts. So huge thank you, and of course, a big shout out to A-Crown. Uh, specifically him, because he helps me a lot with some of my stories, specifically the Color Matrix and the chapters that go on Tiger Tales Game Over. Thank you very much guys for listening. Now don't forget to subscribe to the channels, like the videos, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. With that being said, I shall see you guys in the next one. That before we can... <laughs> Don't touch my Pringles. <laughs>